Okay, Daddy, I'm ready for the juice. Go ahead. Ah. Uh, okay. Whip. Ah. So, what do you think? I don't know, dude. I feel like this pleasure dungeon is kind of lame. With, of course, the exception being Prometheus, the four-disc collector's edition. God, I'm sorry I'm not a billionaire. Let's switch to the real hardcore stuff. You watching it explaining the entire Fifty Shades of Grey trilogy. <laughs> Whoa, Daddy. I, I like a lot of different torture pleasures, but that might be pushing it too far. Safe word. Safe word. It's in the contract, as well as a promotion from Incogni. Oh, well, that's nice, I guess. Okay, well, we open with gray clouds and a gray Seattle, and there are probably like 48 other gray things somewhere, but I'm not gonna show you. They're too sexy. I have no strong feelings one way or the other. But speaking of, here's a fancy boy who wears fancy clothes and works at a fancy place called Gray House. Oops, I said too many sexy gray things. Tone it down, movie. America is discovering the comfort and convenience of Gray House. <gasps> anyway, fancy boy runs around and a less fancy college girl who wears less fancy clothes, she randomly bites her lip because I guess she's microdosing cannibalism. Oh, delicious. This is what's known as a juxtaposition. They are different. There are many shades of gray differences between them. Up to 50, possibly. Hey. Man, this is already so hot. Oh, my loins. I do have a GPS. Here. And a 4.0 GPA. Here. The college girl, who I guess goes by her porn name, Anastasia Steele, or her OnlyFans. Do OnlyFans people, they use their real names, right? They're they're not lying to me. <laughs> they said they loved me. Oh, sweetie. The college girl, who I guess goes by her porn name, Anastasia Steele, has a sick roommate who was supposed to interview another porn name haver, Christian Grey, but because she's literally so sick, Anastasia drives three hours from Portland to Seattle to do the interview for her. Three hours later. Now, usually this would be a ridiculous request by her friend, but thankfully Anastasia is absolutely floored by the huge, wondrous, sexy grayness of Seattle. I mean, Seattle's the Coruscant to Portland's Tatooine. I mean, Portland only has 87% the population of Seattle. This is a major change. Peruskin? Cut, let's try it again. And also, Bill Nye started his career as an engineer in Seattle. I f Bill Nye the science guy. But the movie wisely omits that little detail because the sexiness levels would just destroy any theater without flood insurance. My dick is drained. Do you think people who write Star Wars jokes are often in Play pleasure dungeons? They are with Xbox games. <laughs> Virginity is cool. Anyway, she's directed by hot lady employees to a room where Christian Grey broods very mysteriously. But unfortunately, Anastasia sucks ass at opening doors. <gasps> Turns out she's an English major. Should have known. Everybody knows you never go full English major. No, English lit. She begins the interview and it's like, why are you so rich? And he like, I've always been good at people. And like, I also good at people. Christian. I will make better mouth. Then she's like, why do you do nice things in Africa? And he's like, that's good business. And she's like, actually, I think you've just got a big, fat, thick, throbbing heart. And he's like, I'm not so good at hearts. Probably because she then is like, I see you're adopted. And also, are you gay? And he says, yes, I'm adopted, but no, I'm not gay. Oh. You were adopted at age four. Hell yeah! And let me tell you, the sexual tension is just, woo, too much. Seriously? Extremely hot. He's both adopted and not gay, and does unspecified good things in Africa for money? Ooh, what is he, Mr. Tom Shoes? Girl, marry him! Everything's wet. Why is everything so wet? <laughs> Christian himself is just so enchanted by Anastasia's dizzying interview talent. Are you gay? Yes. Why would they say that? 
because they know me well. He offers her an internship, but she's like, are you sure? I suck at doors. Among other things. Wink. I just wonder if perhaps your might be a bit bigger than you want to let on. He's like, good point. In this line of work, you gotta know how to handle your wood. And on the way out, he steals her interview questions so he can sneakily, sexily email answers to her roommate directly. And Anastasia runs outside to cold shower herself in the Seattle rain because woof. Wait. What's in game? When she returns, her roommate is like, hey, I'm pretty much entirely healed from my debilitating illness that now that I think of it was probably just a massive hangover, which required you to drive a minimum of six hours so I wouldn't fail my assignment, even though the subject knows it wasn't technically me who interviewed him. Although, if he could just email all the answers in the first place, why would anybody need to drive to the inner rim? What exactly is she being graded on? Is this academic fraud? But anyway, I, the roommate, Googled this guy. Wow, he's hot and a billionaire? Wish I hadn't faked that illness. I mean, contracted that illness. Wink. And Anastasia is like, yeah, he is hot and billionaire and does non-gay things in Africa. I don't like men no more. But I have bangs. Oh, and the whore has bangs. So I really have no chance. Bangs. Grotesque. Except the next day as she works a shift at the warehouse store, Christian miraculously shows up. <laughs> and buys a bunch of murder stuff. You're the complete serial killer. And he is very impressed by her ability to unspool a rope. That's impressive. Not even a euphemism. He's just like, wow, what are you, like a Girl Scout? But you want a cookie? Maybe he's hinting that his penis also unspools? I hope not. They have barbed penises, and it ruins you for all the other cats. But okay, she's cute. Clumsy, can't operate doors, but can unspool rope? Is Christian's dream girl a raccoon? That is true! Is he a closet furry? Why well, didn't ask to get f Now that would make, that would be a movie. Oh. Anyway, Anastasia, who remains extremely invested in helping her roommate pass this random class, is like, hey, she needs an original photo of you. She's just having a hard time clearing a photo of you. Very smooth. Do you mind taking one tomorrow? And he's like, sure, why not? Or I can give you this portrait of my hot great whatever grandfather that I have in my attic. That's a joke for all you other English majors out there like me and Anastasia. Hang in there, things won't get better. Truly, truly awful. Well, I study English lit. So I kind of have to be. Unfortunately, Christian does not smile during the photos, which is very 19th century of him. Also very straight of him. God, is he straight. I'm not gay. I'm not gay. I'm not gay. I'm not 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 gay. I'm not gay. I enjoy various physical pursuits. Sports. I'm glad the movie basically opened confirming that he's straight so I don't have to spend the whole movie like wondering, is he straight? I don't want to do that. Oh. You know what? I gotta know. Don't mess with my mind. I'm not gay. Christian asks Anastasia on a very boring coffee date. I mean, the coffee only goes inside their mouths. Rah. I thought this movie was supposed to be hot. She tells him that her dad died when she was a baby and her stepfather Ray is like the greatest and her mom is on her fourth marriage and Christian is like this was a bad idea date over <laughs> without even a blast for goodbye outside she's almost sexily killed by a bike watch it and Christian is like stay away from me I'm not the man for you Ugh. and that's just like so tantalizing I mean how could she stay away from him now my heart says yes but my butt says no. It's the same reason that burglars always go for the houses with the stay away from our stuff signs out front. And indeed, Christian mails her a bunch of old books because she's an English major. We just love that sh Gimme, gimme old books, yum! Eat any good books lately? And she's like, oh wow, crazy. This is too much. And then she goes to a bar to do shots, which would have been perfect timing for a Grey Goose sponsorship, but it doesn't happen because this movie was made by a bunch of cowards who obviously don't need money, unlike me. Please sign up for my Patreon. Feed the starving children. Eventually, she shot so much that she has to pee. Wow. I'm gonna go, I gotta pee, I gotta pee. And she drunkenly calls Christian, who is like, wow, you sound drunk. I'm coming to the bar to pick you up and fight off an unwanted advance from a boy named Jose because I'm still staying at a nearby hotel. And she's like, Oh, well, puke. Ah. <coughs> then she follows her vomit with a passing out chaser. So Christian does the gentlemanly thing and takes her to his hotel, undresses her, and sleeps in the bed next to her, but like platonically. We will, we will, we he doesn't do anything besides strip her naked and sleep next to her. He's not weird. Necrophilia is not my thing. Nobody said it was, dude. Can't be too careful. Only the wicked cry necrophilia when none mentioneth necrophilia. What are you talking about? Um, 
What? Sorry, I'm distracted because he just took off his shirt and bit some toast. <laughs> toast? As in dead, defenseless bread? Mm. Oh yeah, it's dinner time. <laughs> Christian takes a shower and then is like, by the way, I don't do romance. <laughs> that is very clear, my guy. But it's fine because he merely rubs Anastasia's face like slightly and she acts like he shocked her with one of those sex sticks from surrogates is the first reference I could think of. I think we're done here. He chases that up with a smooth, I would like to bite that lip. But then chases that with a only if I get written consent chaser. I'm not going to touch you. Not until I have your written consent. <clears throat> Ooh. Much. Except then he says, never mind. And he makes out with her in an elevator, which is the sexiest of all transportation machines. I mean, a big, thick robot full of little people just sliding up and down long shafts. Mm. Extremely hot. But that's it. And he takes her home to find Anastasia's roommate hooking up with Christian's chill-ass brother, Elliot. I'd explain how that happened, but do you really care? Yes. No. A wizard did it. I don't know, he came to the bar last night with Christian because, you know, brothers go to bars, I assume. I don't have brothers. All I have are three kids and a wife and a Patreon. Maybe if I get enough patrons, I could buy a brother? Maybe one of Dave's? Think about it, Dave. I mean, what could your brothers be worth? $11? What could it cost? $10? Cesare, the Polish guy who punches up these scripts, is always trying to sell me one of his brothers, but we could never figure out the conversion rates. I mean, what does Poland use? Beets? Nobody likes beets, Dwight. That night, Anastasia and Christian go for a helicopter ride, but not before he buckles her seat like a toddler. A sexy toddler. Oh no. Are we demonetized again? Hmm. Dang it. But man, Anastasia loves Seattle. They end up at Christian's fly-ass apartment and he immediately makes her sign an NDA. Not disclosure agreement. So she can't tell anybody about anything embarrassing he says or does, and to test her he says he doesn't make love. I f hard. Of course you do. Good thing she signed because that it is embarrassing. Almost as embarrassing as my playroom. Does he even have an Xbox or a PS2? No! I'd rather be dead. No, I'm kidding. It's super cool and super fun. Right. It has whips and also a, a smacker. It's called a flogger. I hardly know her. And Anastasia acts like it's so weird in there, but honestly, it looks exactly like Dave's room. Do women do this to you or do you? I do this to women. Fly that freak flag. And just like Dave, he's like, oh, I'm a dominant, by the way, and I'd like for you to be my new submissive and it'd be super fun there'd be all these rules and rewards and punishments and you'd get your own room in my apartment on the weekends i also have a second sexier contract you know that outlines all the specifics of our that weirdness you would review it and we would negotiate what you are and are not willing to try give me that i love paperwork and she's like ha huh, well that's a little much because i'm literally a virgin <sighs> still a virgin very tacky and he's like oh my god okay well first order of business is a little pre-contract deflowering what are you doing rectifying the situation um, which he achieves with copious amounts of pumping boy butt curse his perfect butt that completed he plays a little midnight piano until she hops on him naked because that's just what being a musician is like Plonk a few chords, pop a few cherries. That's the life. It's a simple fact of life. I'm so bummed I ended up in comedy instead of music. I was pretty good at music. <laughs> But now I'm here. <laughs> Look at us. Damn it! What happened to us? <laughs> hey. Look at us. Look at us. Huh? Who would have thought? Not me. Fart! <laughs> the next morning, Anastasia makes pancakes and shakes her butt, and then she and Christian take an unbelievably awkward little bath. And then he ties her wrist with a necktie, and Anastasia succinctly sums up the entire plot of the franchise. I'm naked. But before they can go for round four, or whatever we're at now, 
Christian's adoptive mom shows up and is like, you want to go to lunch, adoptive son? He's like, no, I don't, adoptive mom. And she's like, well, I had to try. Nice to meet you, Anastasia. Goodbye. Nice to meet you. Bye. Before he takes her home, Anastasia is like, hey, by the way, how many women have agreed to your contract and stayed in your separate sex slave room? And he's like, only 15. It's a lot of women. <laughs> but babe. If you agree to be my submissive, I will be devoted to you. But like, was he devoted to the other 15? I drift in and out. Also, he says he hates dinners and movies, which makes her maybe even more upset than the fact that he's sexually enslaved like three basketball teams. This is what I want. I love basketball. He can see that she's still a little unsure as he drives her home, as evidenced by how she's 100% completely passed out. I mean, it was a big night. Lots of stuff going on. Cherry's popping all over the place. Cherry. <laughs> Cherry. <laughs> So he stops the car and they go on a walk where he reveals, babe, look, the reason I think dominant submissive relationships are so great is because my mom's friend made me her sub for six years when I was 15 years old. How great is this? Just me and this delicious new sub. No, this rules. And he and this old lady criminal, they're still friends. See, it's great. This new sub tastes incredible. This is gonna be huge. And this is basically why people in kinky relationships absolutely despise these movies because the pop culture Culture poster boy for their lifestyle is a rape victim in need of therapy. Ah, they probably taste the same. Look, there are hundreds of varieties of BDSM relationships where no one was ever touched without their full consent and everyone is just chill and happy and sometimes they wear a collar, but only because they want to. Try to keep an open mind. Sign me up. Anyway, Christian's like, but I feel extra super special about you. I've never taken anyone in the helicopter. You think I just let any old nasty slave lady ride in my helicopter? Think again, Missy. You're special. Yep. Find me on Patreon. The $50 tiers, you get to be my nasty slave lady. <laughs> 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 Well, I guess. It would be irresponsible to not at least try it. How bad could it be? It's bad. This is uh, actually torture, sitting like this in these clothes. I just, I'm not exactly jumping at the opportunity to get whipped and tortured. He finally drops her off and hands her the contract. And she walks in to find a computer guy setting up a new Mac laptop for her. Because God, it's so hard to set up a Mac laptop on your own. <laughs> Okay. Like, what do I do? How do I turn it on? Wink. Necrophilia. I'm just a little old English major. Help me set it up, big strong computer man. If you know how to point, you already know how to use it. Um. Of all the porny moments in this movie, this is actually probably the porniest. A truly stupendous amount of thinking has gone into sex. <laughs> but anyway, then she puts her big girl English major skills to use and reads the contract for a while. It says a bunch of stuff about how she'd have to give up all her free will and do whatever Christian says, but she doesn't accept it fast enough, so Christian shows up unannounced to her new Seattle apartment, because I guess she moved there, and he ties her up and does some spanking. <laughs> And crucially, whips out JD's cold tongue trick from Scrubs. Activate! Form of an ice menorah! No way she can resist now! So she agrees to discuss the contract with him in a conference room lit like Blade Runner. You're reading a magazine, you come across a full page nude photo of a girl. What are butt plugs? <laughs> she begins by demanding they change her address to match her current address on the contract, which is a very smart business move. Page one. Strike out my old address and replace with a new one. You doing business? Like a couple little bitches. Oh. And then she asks for some of the more hardcore sex stuff to be off limits and like, was she a virgin like a week ago? Not so long ago, I don't remember. Are you sure? Yeah. This feels like way too much. But then Christian is like, let me sweeten the pot. If you sign, I'll take you on a real date once a week. And speaking of weeks. I would like to f you into the middle of next week. Wow. He did say he was good at people. Clear my schedule. He is just arting this deal. I'll say I did stay. What would happen? I'm gonna come. Right here? I'm gonna do it. On this table. Impressive. Anyway, then she leaves without signing. Damn. Ah, fully. Now it's her graduation ceremony, I guess, and her stepdad is there, and Christian has been asked to give a commencement speech, but appears to only talk about his personal business. I heard he's gay. No! This is, I guess, exciting to Anastasia. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. What? No 
doubt, no doubt, no doubt, no doubt. So she verbally agrees to the basic terms of the contract without actually signing still. Go, 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 no doubt, no doubt, no doubt. Man, this elevator's the paperwork. And honestly, he can't seem to leave her alone anyway, so maybe it'd be more fun and safer to just endlessly string him along. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, someday. But For what possible reason? For your pleasure. Not today. Things seem to be going just fine without surrendering all of her free will. I mean, hell, he even got her a car. Christian, that's a car. That's a house. That's a fish. That's a bee. Which is another super hot piece of transportation tech because you get inside it and you play with its buttons, which are the, which are the car's nipples. Wow, this movie is filthy. Do you like it? Of course I like it. It's nipples, Mac. Uh, nipples. <coughs> Wink. Weirdly, Christian also sold her old car without asking, and we learn later in the movie he doesn't even give her the money for it. He's obviously given her a better car, but the insurance and taxes on it are going to suck. Later, they go into his playroom again, and he's like, okay, so if you sign the contract, I would do literally everything I'm about to do to you right now. You know? You're making a lot of sense. And then he does those things. <laughs> You're not making sense anymore! So again, what does the contract do for anybody other than add a sexy John Grisham sheen to what has ultimately been an utterly plotless film so far? I mean, I keep expecting there to be a murder or a twist or anything. They don't even fight enough for it to be a drama. It just sort of is. It depends upon what the meaning of the word is. Yes. Speaking of things that is, Christian appears to show the top half of his hairy dick for a second. Oh, that's a hell of a sack. <laughs> I cannot imagine watching this in a theater with a bunch of other human people. This is why I made Dave watch the sexy scenes and just describe them for me. So go ahead, Dave. Describe their first full playroom interaction. What happened in there? Did they play... Yu-Gi-Oh on the PlayStation 2? Wrong! He mostly smacks a bunch of her body parts. And also watch this dance scene. It's boring as hell. Get up, come on, get down with the sickness. After that debauchery, they head to a nice family dinner with his parents and sister and brother and a roommate who is still dating that brother. And Anastasia reveals that she's gonna visit her mom for a couple of days in Georgia. And Christian is like, what the hell you are? Spank! And Anastasia is like, you are so complicated. God, I just don't get you. And like, no, he isn't. He literally made a contract of all the things he is and wants. What do you want? Simple as that. The man literally came with an instruction manual. And possibly on the instruction manual? Come. What's the game? It's your fault for not reading it despite its stickiness. You're an English major. You specialized in reading. What do you want? She's like, I don't inherently want this. Why do you want me to do this? And he's like, it's fine. You're actually changing me, babe. I'm less, you know, dominant than I was, but also sign the contract. If you just signed the contract, you wouldn't have to think. Stop. My penis can only get so erect. And later he's like, okay, here's my deal. The lady who gave birth to me, she died when I was four and I remember terrible things and I think I see her in my dreams. And if you remember, I was later statutorily raped by my adoptive mother's friend. So again, I think that this violent uh, contract necessary way of fulfilling sexual desires is probably coming from a healthy place, right? I don't, I mean, I don't think it's weird. I mean, what did you do growing up? What was your childhood like? I, I... I wouldn't know. And to prove how healthy I am, you can go to Georgia. Singular. I am nothing if not a benevolent dominant, as you'll someday find out if you ever sign the damn contract. Just sign it. Sign it. Sign it. Maybe not. Ah, damn it. In Georgia, Anastasia is struck by how incredibly beautiful her mom's fourth marriage is. And Christian texts her to be like, by the way, I'm getting dinner with my former rapist later. And when she doesn't answer his call, he just shows up in Georgia the next day and is like, okay, I know what girls like. Want to fly around in a glider? And that seems to work. <laughs> Yeah, do it. Release. I mean, what is she, an RPG woman? Can you just continually hand her wheels of cheese until she agrees to sign the contract? So I got Dave to work with me. Thank you, you didn't have to do that. Yes, I did. In retrospect, that was a lot of cheese I gave him, and cheese is not cheap. I think he hustled me. This is why you should only cheese people into relationships if you're stupid rich like Christian. <laughs> Oh no! An accidental bit of almost plot happens when Christian gets a bad business phone call and has to go back to Seattle because of business plot reasons. I went to the stock market today. I did a business. Keep me informed. 
Beep boop boop bop. And Anastasia also arrives at his apartment later and he's in full on angry business mode. So they go blow off some steam by letting Christian whip her in the playroom while choir music plays. At least that's what Dave says happened. He tends to embellish after, you know, half a bottle of salad dressing. Oh! Later, Christian goes to play more piano and Anastasia's like, everything you play is so sad. You said you were six when you learned. Was it because you wanted to please your new family? Phrasing. Phrasing. That's not how I would phrase it. Uh, not in this film. Family's complicated. <laughs> but he's like, forget piano. I am frustrated that you won't let me punish you super hard. And she's like, I still don't get why you're so hell bent on this. And he's like, because I'm 50 shades of Hey. Which, okay. You got it, dude. That still doesn't really explain much. And she's like, actually, I'm convinced now. Why don't you punish me so I can understand you? I need you to show me what you want to do to me. Makes sense. And he does. I'm going to hit you six times. One, two, three, four, five, six. And it turns out that his worst is whipping her maybe harder than previously. And she's like, I don't like that. We're broken up now. But also, I maybe love you. And he's like, ooh, yeah, I wouldn't recommend falling in love with me. And the next day she leaves and he tries to stop her. But she yells stop. Stop. And no. No. Don't they have safe words? My safe word is keep going. What if she said red or yellow or whatever the hell her safe words are? And then he would have had to respect them because of the dominant stuff. Red, red, red. But no, that would require literally any thought in the script. I don't know. But then the movie ends with a sad montage of them looking sad and remembering the beautiful life they built together with all the whipping and MacBooks and abuse. I think you literally broke my heart. And I guess that's that. One shade down, 49 to go. No. All right, now that's really up the heat. I'm going to steal all your personal data. Uh, you can't though, because I've got Incogni. The company that goes directly to death. Data brokers and demands they delete what information they have about you so that your privacy is protected? Majorly on hot. I actually think it is very hot. I love Incogni. After you made me sign all those freaky contracts, I got inspired to read the fine print for my Costco membership, and apparently they've been selling my personal data, which is why all of a sudden unsexy, juicy spam started filling up my box. My in my inbox. I'm torn on your newfound legal ability. But I guess if Incogni can also get your name off all those find people websites, then I don't have to worry about other random people finding where you live and tying you up and stuff. Incogni can totally do that. And the best part is, if you use code BREEDING at checkout, or follow the link below, you'll get 60% off an annual Incogni plan and get your personal information off the market. Hey, BREEDING is your last name, and also what people do with each other sometimes. Well, unless they're under contract. Contract not to, but sure. Good clarification. And speaking of clarity, you said if I use code breeding at checkout or follow the link below, I'll get 60% off an annual incognito plan and get my personal information off the market? That is exactly what I said, yes. Amazing. I feel like we're really connecting. Uh, we're not. Back to watching then, sub. Ah. No, you're not putting those in my butt. Producers know what the fans want, so the movie opens with Christian having a dream where he, his mom is abused by some guy. That's not very hot. No. Does he even wake up wet? No. It doesn't tell us. We. Oui. Anastasia, for her part, is still not with Christian because she's got a cool new job and a cool new boss named Jack. It's Jack. That's what I just said. I said that. She's his secretary, and occasionally she reads manuscripts, and he's a publisher guy. He does books, basically, which makes him the king of English majors. Nah. He also stares at Anastasia's butt. You know, it ain't much, but it's honest work. Honest work. Just reward. Yeah. Alright, I'll check it out. That night, Anastasia heads to a photo exhibition of Jose's, who tried to make out with her back in the bar that one time when she was super drunk. She said no, no. That's what she said. <laughs> but they're still friends. It's fine. No. Such good friends. In fact, they've taken a bunch of huge ass pictures of her and used them in his exhibit without her permission. You. What, what friendship? If I had asked, you would have been like, no. Yeah. Yay. The collection is immediately purchased by Christian. Oh, like strangers got can't you? Who is there and who is like, hey, babe, you're trying to get dinner? And she's like, okay, but just dinner. Because I'm hungry. No nipple clamps. And he's like, of course. I'll take the clamps I'm wearing right now off. Take these back. Okay. 
Let's just all put our tops down. Already? And then he immediately takes her into a dark alley and shoves her up against the wall and makes lips do what hands do. Shakespeare, English major. How oh, then, dear Saint, the lips do what hands do. You know, fisting. And she's like, wait, I thought I said no, but now my body is saying yes. I can't do this. <laughs> but my butt says no. But actually, no, Christian, I said dinner only. And he's like, God, fine. So he takes her to dinner and orders for her, but she makes a slight tweak to the order to show how she's still in control. Two steaks, medium fries. Um, actually, I'm gonna have the quinoa salad. You cuck. You're the cuck, snowflake. Fine. And he's like, okay, well, what do you think about renegotiating terms? I'm trying to get off this whole wanting to do pain thing. I'm working on it. You know what's best. And she's like, I don't know, man. I have some reservations. And like, yeah, if he's really trying to stop doing the BDSM thing, why would he continue to use legal language? I'd like to renegotiate terms. Is he still trying to go full Gulf War on her butt, but just needs to know which Geneva Conventions apply? She said invade my cave with your special unit. I said he wasn't in a cave. Or does he, he not know of any other way to describe a relationship? Because if he needs one, going Gulf War on their butt is pretty good. I use that term terminology a lot of George in your bush. Yeah, we're about to depose Saddam in that butthole. Is there a, is it just me or are there weapons of mass destruction under all that bush? <coughs> Dave, are you okay? You're harboring a fugitive. I think we just wrote Fifty Shades 4. <laughs> <laughs> Regardless of how you feel about the Gulf War and how it relates to that, but I'm a smash. did you know that Christian's mom was an addict? Crack. Which is sort of the Bond James Bond of crack addicts, I guess. Bond. James Bond. So basically, Jason Statham and Crank? Why didn't you tell me that? I did, but you were sleep at the time. Same girl. And she's like, well, that's just sad enough that I'm willing to take another stab at this relationship, but I'd like it to be, what do you call it? A vanilla relationship? You know what I mean? No subs, no dubs. And honestly, to be safe, nothing at all even anime adjacent. Have you seen what they do in those? No, thank you. And he's like, fine, I like you so much, I'm willing to not beat or whip you, which is, wow, a lot of like. But you need all those things. I need you more. Ha! Gay! Then he hands her, I assume, a wheel of cheese that he got from Costco, and they make out. Dave, you need to find somebody who loves you so much, they don't beat the sh out of you all the time. No strings attached. Turns out that cheese wheel was another MacBook and also an iPhone, but how in the shit is she supposed to set them up? Beep, boop, boop, bop. Without a big strong computer man that flexes thick arms and thicker brain. All, oh, it's, it's pre set up. Thank God. And look at that. 15 minutes into the movie, and we're right back where we were. Staples. That was easy. Which you could probably use for sex stuff, right? Staple that ass to my mouth. We could put three people together. No. Ooh, finally the first bit of actual intrigue. There's a woman standing outside, and I don't know who she is. You know what I mean? That counts as plot. The next day at work, Jack the sexy boss is like, hey, secretary, do you want to go drink brain poison until your standards drop enough to maybe sleep with me? I, I mean, do you want to get a drink? And even though the literal head of HR is standing literally right there, she's like, oh, uh, yeah, you should definitely do that. I can't think of any reason why that might not be appropriate. And so they go. Have fun. But then Christian shows up and literally says, I'm the boyfriend. And side note, after you're married, the term boyfriend feels kind of lame, you know? Like a thing high schoolers say. This is my boyfriend, my friend who is a boy and we are in love and we'll be together forever. And he's going to clamp my nipples and beat me until I cry and then it'll give me multiple Apple products all come crawling back. That's love. Like, you know what I mean, Dave? How's your girlfriend doing? She just had to go into town. We ran out of internet. Did uh, did the Apple TV Plus subscription do the trick? Yeah, that was the torture, is not having internet. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, that was so sexy. It's like you gave her Apple TV Plus, but then you took the internet. Oh, That's love. Whatever. They go buy food <laughs> and then cook the food. And then Christian says he's buying the company where Anastasia works. You're buying SIP? And it's all very hot. I know what you're doing. But then she says that she wants to take it slow, uh, but then they immediately have sex. Man, millennials and their dating rituals, am I right? What do you want, Anastasia? You know, fisting? Get inside! I'm too dressed. Post-coitally, Christian wants to know why Anastasia was a virgin, and she's like, well... I was reading... I mean, books, obviously. And he's like, that makes sense. That's some... Kinky f 
Fuckery. But yeah, books made her want to wait for the perfect guy. And Christian is that guy because he has a helicopter and a glider. I don't know what that is. Other than that, he's a little weird, but he, he works out a lot. He's got a hookup at the Mac store. Hello, I'm a Mac. <sighs> hey, look, it's the weird girl again. But it's fine because Christian's goons are handling it. I'm handling it. No, don't. It's such a f***ing waste of talent. So to decompress after that tense encounter, Christian takes Anastasia to a salon run by his former dom. Yeah, it just got bigger. Oh, and because also there's like a ball tonight, because you know, balls are sexy, right? Look, we have to do something in between awkward sex scenes that I forced Dave to watch at 1 8 speed in case he can see a ball or something, because you know, ball first, then balls after. You know, it's like eating vegetables before you get your vanilla. Vegetable balls, and then vanilla balls. No, 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 I guess the vegetable balls is a ball. Or ball. NBA 2K6, dog. Yo, you trying to ball? NBA Live 06 or ESPN 2K5 or ESPN 2K5, but for a different console? Do you like to play ESPN 2K5 like this or like this? IGN says it will own your soul. I feel like you're saying boys whole. And it's clearly soul. Michael Vick was OP, am I right? Anyway, Anastasia is like, what the hell, Christian? Why would I want to meet your old criminal lady lover? And he's like, it's chill, we're just friends. Why would you take me to meet the woman who seduced and abused you? That's love. And also maybe business partners in this salon? I mean, aren't salons mostly for like money laundering? Isn't that what we've established with all your breaking bads? I take your dirty money and I slip it into the salon's nice, clean cash flow. Gotta pay the troll to get this boy's old. That would have been a plot, but no, they're just running a salon legitimately. I'm a criminal, yo. Anyway, also me, Christian, I've apparently brought all of my subs here for approval, which again, is 15 people. Would you take your subs there? We love these subs! He's shuttling subs back and forth all day long, trying to get approval from his old dom. Look, let's discuss this back at my place. And Anastasia's like, fine, but I am hopping mad. I know I usually emote at twilight levels of intensity, but I'm about to really pop off. Are you kidding me? But she goes. So Christian helpfully shows Anastasia a dossier of the stalker girl named Leela Williams and explains that, well, she's an old sub of his who wanted more from him. So he broke up with her, but then her husband died in a car crash. So she went crazy. That's a lot. And Anastasia's like, I'm not sure how that's supposed to make me feel better. Is there a dossier on me? And he's like, of course, my guy. Look, babe, I didn't know you'd be different. And she's like, oh, this is wrong. But specifically, I'm referring to the fact that you keep giving me money, not necessarily the abusive, violent nature of our relationship or your disturbing past. All of this is wrong. You put money into my account. What'd you say? And Christian is like, well, what if? Sex is not gonna fix this right now. But won't it though? I mean, it literally always does in these movies. And then Christian's like, okay, look, uh, here, why don't you connect all these weird burn marks on my chest with some lipstick? That's my official no-no square of touching. We good? No touching! No touching! No touching! I can live with that. I love a good no touching policy. And then a guy comes over to do her hair. Oh! And she picks out some new lingerie and a dress and Christian tries to shove some big balls up inside Anastasia. And no, I'm not talking about clowning. Are you sad? It's more like he's shoving a Newton's cradle all the way up. No, you're not putting those in my butt. No, of course not, Anastasia. Therefore, you're... What's that? Curious. Also, she's given normal jewelry for her outside body parts, which I think is the official way that Kay describes it. Every kiss begins with external body part jewelry, but also occasionally internal if you're a freaking weirdo and also with Kay. Anyway, now that their holes are full of balls, Christian and Anastasia head to a masked charity ball, which you might think would be some sort of eyes wide shut sex thing, but is in fact just a normal ass charity ball, but with masks. Now you know what those silver balls do. A little oversimplified, Alice, but yes. Again, there is no attempt to add any extra layers of intrigue. Everything just pretty much is what it is, give or take a couple secret hole balls. We're looking at balls, let's turn it around. Copy all the balls, we're turning. Christian's sister with different hair from the last movie walks up and is like, did you know that Christian got kicked out of four different schools for fighting? Okay, bye. I'll be right back. And then they go do some auction sh just straight up, they do an auction. $15,000 going once, going twice. It belongs in a museum. Dr. Jones, sit down. 
sold to the young lady in silver. And Anastasia gets so bored she has to be spanked. Let's go. So Christian takes her to his childhood room where she finds a picture of his mom, which is rarely an ideal thing to find post-adult spanking. The thought of me dead gives you an erection? Yeah. I don't want to talk about it. <gasps> oh my god! Intrigue! Masked man takes picture of gray family picture? What does it mean? Nothing. Uh... I like the implication that he's like, spoiler alert, this guy basically hates the grays, right? The way that we learn this is that he takes an iPhone photo of the family photo in the family's house. Like, what information is being revealed in the family photo that you're taking with your iPhone? Success. They're very famous. You could find the photo anywhere, but you're also actively in their house. You know where they live. What's a way that we can show that something, there's a shady guy at this party? I guess that is odd. Yeah. I don't want to talk about it. I don't know. But Christian's old dom pops up in the bathroom and is like, hey girl, Christian needs a submissive or he's going to snap and kill somebody and or go to jail. I just helped him get an outlet for his, you know, kind of innate violence. All I did was lead him to the truth of who he really is. John C. Yeah. And Anastasia's like, there's no way that someone like you could ever understand what we have. We spank. We do ball stuff. Weird. We ride around in expensive vehicles. <laughs> Don't go in your butt. And that's actually pretty much the extent of our relationship, but you still wouldn't get it! It's love! That's what love is. I'm impressed. I'm changing him. I have balls from him inside of me right now, but it's it's good. It's good. It feels good, so it's not torture. I don't know whether to worship at your feet or spank you. Please don't spank me. Speaking of, they drive home and she falls asleep again because she is a terrible co-pilot. And do we really think they have anything to talk about? No. They're either plowing each other, arguing about the specific ways they're allowed to plow each other, or she's sleeping. Can you come? Going twice. Take option two. She sleeps a lot. She missed key plot points in the last one because she was asleep. Catch a Mariners game? No! But oh no! Wake up, Anastasia! There's a problem. Somebody who is definitely Leela, but not necessarily Leela, but also is definitely Leela. They're not going to invent a whole nother character for a whole nother plot point. This person who is Leela trashed your car. Intrigue! That's come, in it? You better go hide on another luxury vehicle. Perhaps a watercraft? Perfect. Also, Anastasia sexy washes off Christian's no-no square, which is not a sentence anybody has ever probably said before because, like, isn't that abuse? <laughs> if he's like, I can't be touched here because I have cigarette burns from, like, the abuse of men that my mom dated before she crack addict died. Either way, this movie's a trendsetter. I know how difficult it is for you to come. It means you love me. Don't worry, come. I'll get you out of there. I'd like to see a Marvel movie do that. Steve Rogers is not a virgin. I'm not taking any chances. Hey, by the way, Anastasia, now that we're washing off my no-no square, my mom overdosed and then I sat with dead her for three days until the police found us. And before you ask, let me remind you. Necrophilia is not my thing. I just want to get out ahead of that. I know I have a lot of weird traumas from that period of my life that has turned very sexual for some reason, but the dead body sex is not one of them. I know how difficult it is for you. My adoptive mom was also, I guess, a doctor at some point? That's actually a pretty interesting reveal because they're an impossibly rich debutante family, but also the mom has her doctorate in medicine. That's actually kind of a compelling twist on her character, but it's never explored further because it's not a pleasure hole. <laughs> And that would make this a movie instead of clumsy, elevated porn. And Anastasia was like, Thank you for telling me. Can I drive the boat now in montage? Thank you very much. I guess they think they solved the Leela problem at some point because now Anastasia is back at work and her boss is being mean and is like, You need to come to New York City with me to a book expo so we could do books with more book people. Yeah. And naturally, Christian is like, No, you can't do that. And she's like, Well, I need to for my job. And he's like, Well, I'm peeved. And then Anastasia wanders into the playroom. Yeah. Anything you like. And he and she literally finds some nipple clamps. Those are nipple clamps. That's what I just said. I said that. And some leg bindings. What's this? We'll see, bitch. And they do things with them. Dave, can you please explain what they did? Spare no details. Also, no crying this time. You old horny slut! Last time was different. What Dave said was filthy. <gasps> anyway, that itch scratched. Christian jumps right back into hey. If you want to go to New York. Don't. Did you know your boss has had three assistants quit in the last 18 months? But he does work in books, so maybe they quit because the pay was shit. 
It doesn't mean he's a bad boss. How much money is in books? Three times money. Anyway, how about I, Christian Grey, billionaire, hot boy, not gay, Africa lover? I'm straight! How about I take you to New York City? Okay. Okay. And I thought that meant that she would still attend the expo, but just with Christian around. But apparently, no. She tells her boss she's not going at all. And he's like, are you sure about that? I don't want to brag but I'm a pretty great teacher. And she's like, oh, okay, well that's something, but what else can you offer? I can make you come. Okay, well, that might be a bit too far in the other direction. So she pops him in his outside balls. Now you know what those silver balls do. And runs outside to where Christian is waiting, and hey, I'm no business guru. I mean, I do have a Patreon, and I am exploring ways to monetize my three starving children. You are my son. Take my f***ing money! But if I was the boss of this book thing... It's Jack. I think I'd be a little more worried about Anastasia's violent, uh, famous... Camera loves him almost as much as you do. ...rich boyfriend who literally just bought the company that I work for. Have a little self-preservation, my guy. What is it about Anastasia that makes all these powerful dudes so weak in the outside balls? Good morning, Mr. Hyde. <laughs> She seems nice, but she has bangs. Ugh, that is much too quirky for my taste. I don't just have a really hot butt. And what do you know? Christian somehow manages to pull some strings and get the boss fired. Well, at least that's dealt with. Even though, as Anastasia clarifies, I thought your deal with SAP hasn't been finished yet. And Anastasia is like, I hope this doesn't come back on me because... You know I love working. I'm sorry, did we know that? No! What little we've seen of your job, it's just been you getting sexually harassed and doing relatively menial tasks. And also, again, how is this going to affect her negatively? Her boyfriend literally owns, or will literally own, the entire company. I think she'll be fine. You can't keep me locked up in your mountain. And what do you know? The next day, the HR lady who sent her to get after work alcohol with an attempted rapist is like, God, we're screwed. How are we going to keep things running now that your old boss has resigned? I guess, do you want to just fill in for Jack at this morning's meeting? Wow, how lucky. Does the HR lady even know how much she loves work? Man, she really earned this. Good for her. I'm so proud of her character. Well, yeah, but I, I, I... She says something incredibly generic in a meeting about how actually maybe they should publish good books for once. And those are exactly the readers that we should be chasing. This idea is too good. I can't take this anymore. I'm sorry. And the biggest boss is like, wow, maybe you should continue to hold your old boss's position probably forever. What a brilliant thing you said about how we should print good books. Amazing. The idea is too good. It's breaking the universe. Maybe we should take a look. Even better, she's a cool boss that doesn't ask for coffee nor sex from her subordinates. And I don't expect you to fetch me come. unless you're getting some for yourself. Don't worry, come. I'll get you out of there. Thank you, Hannah. Tight. Tighter even than a ball in a hole. The rest of it will just make up as we go. To celebrate, Christian asks her to both move in and remove her panties at dinner. And she does both and is rewarded with an abortive elevator fingering. Come. Don't come. Give him the stick. Don't give him the stick. That seems unfair. I mean, who is she? Jason Statham and Crank? Welcome to my life. That's twice. Does she need to keep her heart rate up? I don't know. Don't come. So you can fall asleep like you always do? I don't think so. But Christian gets another one of his ambiguous angry business calls. Beep boop boop bop. No. So Anastasia wanders around yet again until she finds Christian's actual playroom. When Christian eventually finds her and questions how she got into this room with no doors, she's like, let's play a game of pool. You wanna go? If I win, you have sex with me in the other playroom. And if you win, you can have sex with me in another way, which is very high stakes. Because doesn't he just like to have sex in the playroom? You can either have sex with me how we normally do, or you can have sex with me how we normally do. Huh? If I defeat you in billiards, we're gonna have to do what we always do. Now sign here, sign here, <laughs> sign here. You can't tell anybody about this. I love paperwork. Mm. We'll see. They're both good at pool, and they look good doing it. Except Anastasia completely boofs with a scratch after sinking the eight ball. Side pocket. So Christian just bends her over the pool table and says he wants to be rough with her. I hope you're not a sore. What's that? It depends on how hard he's banged me. 
but this feels like the tamest thing they've done in the series. Wouldn't mind bending her over a barrel and showing her the 50 states, right? I don't know, I didn't actually watch it. David, describe it to me and use the anatomically correct sock puppets I made you. I'm gonna be rough. Oh! <laughs> wait a second, hold on. Hold on. Hold on, wait, give me like, just like 15 minutes. I need an orange juice. That's why he's all like helicopters and hang gliders. <laughs> He's got a he's got a really long refractory period. I'm gonna be very rough with you. So you can fall asleep like you always do. The next day, after a workday crammed with no coffee and no sex, but just great book ideas, Anastasia heads back to her apartment to find whoa, Leela with a gun. <laughs> It's all good though, because Christian walks in and dominates slash pets her, which is honestly a great premise for a cop and or superhero show. It's like a badass grizzled detective or Batman, and they stop crimes by telling criminals to sit so, so they could be pet. Think about it, Dave. This is our big ticket. <laughs> Anastasia is freaked out by this, as if Christian didn't tell her months ago that he had friggin' 15 subs. We love these subs! And also that Leela specifically was one. I mean, yes, the gun in her face thing wasn't great, but she's specifically weirded out by Christian, but he's a weird guy. He's always been a weird guy. Why are you still surprised by this? Yeah. Whatever. Anastasia slow-mo sad walks about town for three hours and then still ends up at Christian's apartment anyway. Where the f*** have you been? If you men only knew. And he goes full sub on her and admits that he's not a dominant, he's a sadist. I get off on punishing women. Women who look like you. Like and your mother. Oh, thank God. But also, it's fine. I promise to stop. You mean more to me than... Pussy! I want to believe you. And also, you can touch my middle part if you want. And she's like... Bah, good enough for me. So they bang. Man, these conflicts just take forever to resolve. I mean, what was that? She's been gone for three hours. Four total hours from inciting incident involving guns, former lovers, and freaky sex stuff to fully made up? <laughs> I'm happy to see them put in the work. Don't be ridiculous. Christian then has a bad dream, and when Anastasia tries to snuggle him, he's like, Marry me. But he's kind of sleepy, so Anastasia isn't sure if he's serious. What? Marry me. I think you're dreaming. Uh-oh, that's another conflict. Well, let's see what happens. The next morning, the very next morning, Christian does Olympic sh That was spectacular. And fully remembers asking her to marry him. Oh, thank God, it's resolved. Why? Anastasia learns also that Christian is having a birthday, so she gets him a sh little present. It's my in a box. Can't open it till the day, though. And he's like, cool, but first, I have to fly to Portland, because the only two places that Christian does business are Seattle and Portland, I guess. I have to go to Portland for some in a box. Call it delayed gratification. But unfortunately, on the way back, they encounter yet another insurmountable obstacle that could take as many as literally less than five minutes of runtime to resolve. He flies over a volcano. You, you, you realize that's a volcano, right? We'll see, bitch. And that maybe causes his helicopter to crash. But then Christian shows up again in Seattle without warning less than five minutes later. But he is a little dirty looking, a little filthy looking, a little naughty looking. Yeah! I mean, he looks like <laughs> shit, but he's in one piece. No, he doesn't. Yeah, he does. His whole family, and also freaking Jose! Just turn it down, please, Jose. In the balance. Thank you. We're there grieving at his apartment. What the hell are y'all doing here? But now that he's not dead, there's really nothing to do. So they all go home and Christian realizes it's both technically his birthday and that he somehow forgot that he had Anastasia's present in his jacket pocket all along. So he opens it to reveal a shitty keychain. Keychain. You're not putting those in my butt. With the word yes written on the back. Hooray, they're gonna get married. I'm thrilled. Yes, yes. As you can imagine, they celebrate this by having sex in the shower. <laughs> and then doing playroom blindfolds. Oh, sweet. <laughs> That's so chivalrous. Have you called Ray? So now they're at Christian's birthday party, which freaking sucks. Except for this one horny waitress. She seems nice. Can I just say happy birthday? Sure. But seriously, it's just old people slowly milling about like they've all lost their keys and will to live. And speaking of, Christian's old Dom is there and she tries to talk to Anastasia again, but she's like, champagne to the face, bitch. Bon appetit, bitch. <laughs> But then Christian's mom comes up and slaps the Dom too. But she doesn't know what she did to Christian, right? Like she has no idea why Anastasia just threw shit in her face. If she did know that this woman statutoried her son, <laughs> But then again, maybe she's just a cool mom. I mean, cool moms let their friends hook up with their children, right, Dave? Not like a regular mom. I'm a cool mom. I'm sorry this is how you had to find out. 
<laughs> I'd rather you do it in the house. Upset, Anastasia runs to Christian's childhood bedroom again, and from this angle, we can see that he has a Chronicles of Riddick poster, which probably explains why he's so violent. <laughs> And he's like, hey, babe, good news. I've terminated my business relationship with the woman I slept with regularly as a child. That's business. And she's like, that's nice. Can you carry me <laughs> and spank me <laughs> to a flower pool room area and propose to me for real, for real with a ring and stuff? And he does. And then they watch fireworks. Did you do that? Except, oh, no. The final scene reveals that it was Anastasia's old boss who took the photo of the photo of the Grace. And he's also out here watching fireworks. Such intrigue. Oh, it's almost like a plot thing, but not really because it's actually just a sequel. Hook. <laughs> I can't believe how many plots have definitely happened and developed over the course of this movie. It's a whirlwind, a sexy whirling wind of plot. Ready for the salad dressing? The what? It's ranch. Well, it looks like ranch. Ow, God. Je Safe word. Oh, fine. Keep turning the movies. I will. God. You're tapping from the bottom, Mrs. Gray. Engagement over. We're already at the wedding with husky Christian vows. I give you my hand and my heart. And my axe. Not to be confused with husky vows told by, like, a Christian guy named Greg. These are Christian Gray's vows. I'm sure you are confused. I'm gonna hurt you. For as long as we both shall live. Shortly after the ceremony, Anastasia changes into, like, a blazer so she'll be more comfortable in case they run into a pop-up bank where she needs to take out a loan as they head to Christian's private plane. Whose existence, by the way, just floors Anastasia. She's like, You own this? What? You, a billionaire who frequently flies for business, own a plane? We own the Do you know how much I love vehicles? They're like walking but faster and you don't get tired. And he's like, yes. <laughs> so they montage and they giggle across Europe. <laughs> They end up at some beach somewhere where some shitty kid gives Christian a shitty rock. Take it, it's a present. It's a rock. Iraq. And Anastasia out loud states the series logline for some reason. There's nothing but boobs for as far as the eye can see. It's boobs and boob land. Greenlit. Sorry. It's impossible not to yell greenlit when you hear that. I get why they made three of these. Psychology. And then they get on yet another leisure vehicle and you have yet more chained up sex. Do you remember your safe word? Mm -hmm. got a pimple bar! New location, new vehicles, same old chain sh**. Learn to live with it. But unfortunately, there's trouble in Boobland, as we can see what is obviously her old boss breaking into Grey HQ and doing bad things. I'll get you out of there. Christian and Anastasia are told via Zoom that there was an explosion in the server room. Uh, but, oh, but literally. And some files were stolen, and also maybe Christian's five-minute helicopter adventure over the volcano? That was... Uh, intentional sabotage, maybe. Did he sabotage the volcano? Wow! Could we possibly drill holes all around the volcano? No! Uh, but no. And yeah, looking at the old footage, Anastasia's like, obviously that's my old boss. You guys should put me in the FBI. And the Christian says, do you mean female body inspector? Because if so, I think actually they should put me in the FBI because I'm an expert. And they all laugh together. That's literally, that's exactly what happened. It was crazy. It's insane. Well, that actually happened. No. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying, I guess I don't know. There's volcanoes and and honestly, it's 50-50. I'm sorry, Mrs. Gray. Oh, don't be. Anyway, they head home to deal with their sh** and run into Christian's ex-dom's ex-husband? Maybe her ex-sub? This is gonna be huge. Doesn't like me very much. Man, all this sub talk is getting me excited for going to Subway later, Dave. I'm gonna dominate a foot long, and then I'm gonna cuckold you and dom your sub. I mean, watch out, Dave. I'm a sadist for subs. My chicken bacon ranch is gonna be an ex-sub when I devour that sh**. This rules. Anyway, back at home, Anastasia has two brand new security guards of her own, and the maid or the, the cook or whatever is like, We should discuss how you'd like to run the household. Nothing but boobs for as far as the eye can see. There's no rush. And she's like, Actually, I'm way too cool and down to earth to run anything except a book business. I'm gonna cook my own steak tonight and awkwardly mention that I'll be barefoot and pregnant. Ha! Gay! Knowing full well that this will piss Christian right off. I'm not ready to share you. 
and the maid is like, just please wipe any sex juices off the counters if you don't mind. I found that they congeal if left out too long. It smells like- Clean my pee! This is your kitchen. Also, this is neither here nor there, but Anastasia is what, a 23 year old who over and over says she loves her job, right? Does she want any kids anytime soon? And furthermore, they really never thought to talk about this before getting married? Did she forget that children existed until that kid with the rock? Take it, it's a human boy. Quick, somebody hand her a book before she forgets that, oops, while she was on our honeymoon, she got promoted to fiction editor of her company. Who's the new fiction editor? John C. You're gonna read that book. And you're gonna read it now! And you weren't even here. Hooray! Her hard work of getting whole balled by a billionaire has finally paid off! And you weren't even here. Don't be jealous, Dave. Your day will come soon. Now you know what those silver balls do. All I gotta do is make 1.5 billion more dollars and then I'll be a billionaire. And maybe I'll make you the head book person of my book business it's been a rough year we're 500 million in debt <laughs> these videos are very expensive yeah obviously look at the props we had to buy you think this was less than 400 million you're an idiot vintage call of duty world at war snatch crackdown not the original box i mean come on god and country untold stories of the american military you think they just give that sh away no just take my Money. Anyway, Anna hands her assistant Hannah, which is a name much like Anna, a Parisian snow globe for her collection. Because I guess that's like a thing that people do. Ted Lasso had that too. It's just that I have to buy the snow globe or it doesn't really count. We'll see, bitch. Hey, editor, speaking of, can we cut to like a clip of the abominable snowman being like, I got your snow globes right here and grabbing his crotch? I think that fit really well. Thank you, editor. <laughs> Anastasia talks to an author and Christian shows up and they fight over how she's still going by Anastasia Steele, the porn name. There's no Anastasia Gray at SIP. What? No. <laughs> and she's like, I have to. I worked hard for this job and I love my job. You know me, I'm a job girl. I give great jobs. You know that. Then he's like, fair. And you need to shave. Your pubic hairs. No. I'll pick you up after work and take you to an old shitty house we saw on the lake during one of our vehicle excursions and so that we can meet the hottest architect the world has ever seen. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. <laughs> she can erect me a domicile, if you know what I mean, Dave. It's a load-bearing erection. <laughs> I'm going to build you a fabulous... What's that? I'd like to show Anna inside. Of course. Oh my god. Are you gay? This sexy architect is like, I'm gonna knock this house down and build a smart house, just like the one in Disney's smart house. A state-of-the-art, self-sufficient smart house. Wow. Impressive. But Anastasia is like, A, eh, no, because I love this old sh house that we'll never see again for the rest of the movie after this scene. It's very special to me. I love it. I love what you're doing in Africa. And B, your looks and your boobs at my husband are threatening me. Anna. So you'd better back down before I like don't hire you for this job. I know how us women love our jobs. And also your car is literally color. And you live in Seattle because that's the only city that exists. Hello, besides Portland and the oft-mentioned but never visited New York City. And she's like, understood, I'll put these sweater puppies away. I would never. And Christian is like, wow, you really handled her. If you could handle her, you can handle this. What's that? So I guess I'll let you drive my car. Everything they do and say is just so human, you know? Almost like this movie was written by a human, but... I think we know that it wasn't. Christian Grey is based on three people that I know. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. <laughs> oh, that just tells you how oh. old I am. Anyway, Anna's like, tight. I love vehicles. As you know, I'm gonna go hella fast because I'm wild. Whoa, Anna, easy, Anna. Wild guy, bitches! Oh, yeah! <laughs> ah! The inmates are running the asylum. The loony left. <laughs> It's getting worse. <laughs> it's getting worse. What is happening? What do they think you're going to do to them? Yeah. What do you do to this dog? Is this your sub? <laughs> oh, he's sub. Come on. <laughs> this is he's all on camera. Him. Dave Come just on. just dominating his dog. <laughs> How old is this dog even? <laughs> yeah, he'll see if he'll sit next to him. No, dude. There's no way. We've tried. We've filmed so many things together and that's literally <laughs> never worked. <laughs> But she drives so fast, they lose their bodyguard's car. Slackers. And yet somehow pick up a tail. Christian's like, well, I guess you have to dangerously lose them too, babe. Lose them. Seriously? Did you cut the brakes again? Yeah. Oh, oh, damn it. Why would you do that? 
that. I don't see an option where we slow down so our bodyguards can catch up or make a U-turn or something. We gotta engage in the limpest car chase ever filmed. <sighs> Come on, dude. And so they do that, and she does manage to lose them, and all the excitement makes her like, this ain't the only stick I can drive, stick. Give me your stick so I can drive it. Or I guess more specifically, ride it, but that's not a saying. I don't think. Yummy, yummy penis time. That's literally exactly what happened. It was crazy. We're in a parking lot. They later learned that they weren't chased by her old boss, but a woman. Which I think means that this movie has passed the Bechdel test because of cinema's first ever woman-on-woman -woman chase scene. That looks like a woman. Suck it, Bechdel test. And Christian's like, well, that's just crazy. Come with me to New York City, Anastasia. And she's like, no. New York City is a place that only exists for you. I can never go there. I am trapped in some purgatorial world where I can never go to New York City. I can only be offered the chance to, and yet I can never take it. I am Sisyphus, and New York City is at the top, and my rock is a plane ticket, and every time I get it up there, the plane ticket f***ing, it rolls back. That's Greek. Sisyphisting, more like it. Oh my god, I'm Sisyphus. I'm an English major. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> oh, are you? Anyway, I have to go to work. You know I love work. And he says, okay, but you'd better not hang out any bars with any friends. We are being stalked. <laughs> <laughs> And she's like, yeah, yeah, that's the only plot that we can think of. We did a last movie, we're doing it this movie. I'm gonna sexually cut your hair. That's come, in it? Because oh. I, I don't know, we gotta kill some runtime. And uh, she finds a gun and is like, why do you have a gun? He's like, oh, it's Leela's gun. I didn't give it to the cops because she was in enough trouble. And her brain broke because I sexed her too hard and then her husband died. <laughs> Lemony Snicker, what a series of unfortunate events you f***ing been through, you ugly f***. You know, you're in a lot of pain. Anastasia's like, that makes sense. Yummy, yummy, penis time. Man, the actual real dialogue in these movies has improved. Because <laughs> that's what they say. They just say yummy, yummy, penis time. <laughs> The next day at work, Anastasia checks out her first book's rad My Chemical Romance inspired cover art and, and is told it already has 200,000 pre-orders. 200,000? Okay. Which is basically an impossible number these days for a first time author, but he did seem to have a lot of internet hits. Voice Fox, for example, got 80,000 hits last week. Really? Those are rookie numbers in this racket. So to celebrate, she goes to a bar with her old roommate, despite, you know, that being the one thing she was told not to do because she's being stalked by a woman, which, as we all know, is the worst thing to be stalked by. Suck it, Bechdel Tess. What do you mean? It's worth it, though, because it's clear from this line read that she loves her friend. Oh my god, you're so cute. <laughs> I missed you. Ugh, they're best friends. I'm gonna stalk you until you make another date, okay? Yeah. Yeah. She heads home and is immediately grabbed and held at knife point by her old boss, but then her bodyguards just as immediately subdue him with just like the most epic pistol poses. Put your hands up, bitch. Oops, I think you broke into the wrong apartment, big guy. That boss's life is about to change. Yeah, <laughs> this better not awaken anything in me. Better restrain him. I don't have anything. We do. Hi, you're here for me. Okay, well, she's interviewed by this guy who plays a cop in everything he's ever in. Uh, excuse me, a cop or a doctor. Literally his IMDB is ass to ankles detectives and doctors. Maybe one day he'll get to play both at the same time. Can I ask why? Anastasia wakes up the next morning to find a morning drinking Christian looking pissed. Double pissed, I guess. British and American. See, you've learned something. This is an educational channel. I'm like Christian Grey if the balls were knowledge and Anna's holes were your brains. Are you taking the piss out of me? I'll get you out of there. And she tries to give him a love job in the shower but he rejects her which is basically impossible for him. Hello. Darkness, Come. And then after work, he chains her to a wall and they have sex. So I guess their issues are resolved yet again. We're going to the playroom. The Dave and Busters. This is a shockingly accurate picture of marriage, Dave. Just wait. Upset with your wife for like getting kidnapped? Well, just chain her to the wall. It's really great. It is hard to find a babysitter or like an engaging two hour animated film for your children to watch. You know, get them distracted so that you can resolve your problems via ball torture and stuff. But it's, you know, nobody ever said that marriage wasn't hard work, Dave. <laughs> You gotta prioritize your ball torture. There are long-term effects when we do... Except, oh no, there is still trouble in boob land. Christian vibrates her, but doesn't finish vibrating her. That's love. That was not love. That's mean. It's also like Jason Statham and Crank again. <laughs> 
Apparently, Christian has also had a dream about Anastasia being dead, which makes him sad because as we all know, necrophilia is not my thing. What is that about? He can't have sex with her if she's dead because that's not his thing. He'll do it, but he does. it's not preferred. Necrophilia is my thing. But then actually it's okay again because he takes her and her roommate and his brother and his sister and also freaking Jose. <laughs> The only thing that we really know about him is that he takes photos of her without her consent and sells them. And he tries to hook up with her when she gets drunk. So let's bring him with us to the chateau. So he's a bit of a fixer-upper. How is he not dead? What am I missing here? Is he funny? Does he do good impersonations? Can he explain entire film franchises in an engaging way for hours on end? Nah, dog! There's only one of us! Yo! Let's go! Christian, sing it! Maybe I'm amazed at the way I read. Maybe I've heard enough. Okay, good. I guess writing a plot is even harder than Christian is at apparently all times, except for that one time in the shower a few scenes ago. He's the bravest guy I know. Speaking of, there's a scene later where Christian and Anastasia have sex on a table. Finally, the series is almost over. Let's do table sex. Later, Christian's brother proposes to the roommate. Please. And man, these two rich brothers have really plundered that dorm room. Now they just need to get Mia, his sister, to suck Jose like a golfer through a hose, and Washington State University Vancouver will be fully vanquished. <laughs> They celebratorily dance until a dude literally says, Hey, what's going on? And immediately finds out. And then really finds out. Man, Christian really is just the bravest guy. Now I'm just in awe of him. And he's only dated one girl? Very cool. I'm so happy that legally you don't have to include subs in your body count. How great is this? Hey, not everyone marries the first girl they ever dated. It's like they never happen, except, I guess, when they come back and try to murder your one and only girlfriend. Well, some of us like to get it right the first time, bro. Playroom montage, Dave, describe it. Dude, they're doing system linked Star Wars Battlefront 2, uh, but he uh, chose the Wookiee, which is really overpowered, because it's got the crossbow that shoots three yeah. bullets or whatever, yeah. and she's like, She goes, <laughs> Wookiees are known to do that. The next day at the work she loves so much, the doctor detective stops by to be like, hey, just so you know, your old boss says that actually you came on to him. What? And then you lied to get him fired and he was just stopping by your apartment to talk to you about it. What? And that's enough for him to be allowed to post bail if he can find the money. What? Except he had a knife and he held it against her throat and there were two witnesses to this. Plus, surely they have security cameras? I mean, at that point, even if she did unfairly get him fired, I don't think that negates holding a knife to your throat. I have done so many worse things to Dave. But every time he holds a knife to my throat, he goes to jail for a very long time. Uh, could we put him in another f***ing cell, please? And also, they have him on tape breaking into the gray business with a bomb. Until somebody builds a bigger bomb. And they know he harassed previous assistants, which is something I think I'm just telling you now because I forgot. He's a criminal. He's a very clear criminal. His natural habitat is jail. Just put him in there. Oh That's my God. God. There's no shades of gray. Hey, that's the name of the show. But if you think that's a problem, wait until you hear how Anastasia has been missing her contraceptive shots. And what happens when you have sex, Anastasia? Babies happen when you have sex. Exactly. Let's toplessly fight about this for a very long time. You and I tend to do a lot of that. And also leave to randomly go talk to our old ex-doms about it and then fight about that. You f up. Yes. Christian is like, you're gonna choose him, the baby, over me, the father. And she's like, I mean, yeah, that's what good parents do, which A, I actually think the best parents prioritize their partners over their kids, and that ultimately offers the kids more happiness and stability than if the relationship that created them is neglected for them somehow, and B, we don't know that it's a he, it could also be a she. And she could also be a changeling. <laughs> I think he is a she. And I think she's a changeling. What? You need to grow the f up. The next day at Love Work, Anna says something to an Emma and then to Hannah because these characters were named by an overgrown horny child with a limited grasp of phonetic possibilities. And Emma, if we can just make the font size two points bigger on the hard copy. What? But then she gets a call from Mia's phone, but it's actually her old boss who was like, I've kidnapped Mia and you've got two hours to get me $5 million cash or I'll kill her probably. And also don't tell Christian. And then he checks the phone in a body of water. <laughs> 
What you doing in my waters? But she 100% should tell her billionaire boyfriend because she's just dealing with one goober, right? This isn't the Taliban or female body inspectors. <laughs> It's one isolated weirdo as far as she knows. Come on, Greg! Christian could hire Blackwater to lay waste to her old boss and any number of innocent civilians in the area. Google it. There's another Gulf War joke! I mean, technically it's more of a, an Iraq War joke, right? They don't right, call it yeah, Gulf yeah. War II, do they? Because they should. They should. That'd That's good marketing. The sequel. Only this time. It's Iraq. But no, she grabs a checkbook and a gun and heads to the bank. But when they call Christian to make sure it's cool for her to grab five million buckaroos, he's like, Are you leaving me? Is this because of the changeling thing? And she basically says nothing. So he says, okay, fine, you can have the money. But he knows something's up. Because the only thing Anastasia loves are books. And $5 million worth of books is way too many books for one little girl to carry. I mean, I really love books. This doesn't sound like you. I love lamp. So he calls the cops, they track her phone, which goes outside and meets the HR lady, who's wearing like a cute little soldier cap and sunglasses. Look at all your different card hats. Is he paying you? Shut up. Because I guess she's working with the mean boss, which, all right, isn't quite the Taliban, but is more people than I expected. Does that mean that Miss HR had the necessary $500,000 to post boss boy's bail? Because if not, who did? <gasps> Was it Christian and he has been controlling the jerk boss through the HR lady from behind the scenes because this is all some next level danger sex game to him giving the character a defined character arc where his sexual predilections escalate to crazy levels that Anna can't tolerate? No. No. Because that would be interesting. It would make this an actual movie. So nothing as interesting as that happens. I'll cut to the clip that I think might explain it. It's alleged Lincoln misused company finances to post bail for one Jack Hyde. Now Anastasia's at the warehouse where Boss Boy is and he slaps her twice, which basically kills her. <laughs> <laughs> Fatality. Except, oh, she still has the gun, so she suits him in the knee <laughs> as the police and Christian arrive. She passes out as they take her to the hospital, and Christian takes the time to realize, okay, fine, I love her, and I can be a dad. Tell her you're sorry, and mean it, and then give her the <laughs> And then Anastasia wakes up, and she's fine, and the baby's fine, the baby's fine. and Christian cries for the first time ever. Are you crying? Ha! <laughs> Gay! And man, seeing Jamie Dornan fumble around with this schlock makes me want to watch Synchronic again. The next dose could kill you. And then probably The Endless. What the Dickens brings you all the way out here? And then honestly, literally anything else? Can we please just stop talking about this? Anything at all? Please? Ugh, a couple dangling threads they tie up here. Turns out, HR Lady also had sex with the boss man and was blackmailed into helping him because he had a sex tape of her. What's the issue, dear? And the reason that boss man is so mad at Christian is because he was also a boss foster kid and he and Christian literally lived in the same foster family for a time and if he'd been adopted instead of Christian he'd probably have a better life and Christian would be in jail but Anastasia is like no way babe that's not true you're nothing like him you've had 15 subs you were given a life with advantages yes but look what you made of it also you have Honor? You're a man of honor. You're a very nice admitted sadist who almost certainly would have murdered someone if you hadn't learned about BDSM, and that makes you special. And you treat people well. Please don't spank me. <laughs> also, they found your mom's grave if you want to go check it out, and then maybe we could have a montage of our entire beautiful relationship. And he's like, you're the best. I'm so glad all these hints that I might be more violent and dangerous than we thought never really got explored. I just decided to not do those things, and I still not do those things. I mean, I, I still spank with the best of them, but I no longer need to be a dominant, and I'm very much in control of how hard I spank. Thank you, <laughs> and good night. It seems that they've found where your birth mother is buried. Necrophilia is not my thing. Then, to end the movie, Anastasia goes sub for him, but A, that's a little distressing because she's like pregnant during that scene, and B, technically, you're tapping from the bottom, Mrs. Gray. Then we get a mid-credits boy child, and she's pregnant again, and man, really, basically nothing happened in the series, huh? No! <laughs> Ride in a foreplay, let's go to Arby's! Oh yeah, nothing gets me more psyched to eat that trash than being degraded and tortured. Just spray me with horsey sauce, daddy. You know how I like it. Oh, I know. Oh, come on, daddy. Give me the juice. Give me, give me the <laughs> Give me the juice. Ow. That's too much, daddy. <laughs> That's too much juice.